The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. You have to be strong in today's world. Strong. Keep your focus and up. What you believe in how, how to achieve all your dreams. Hey. Keep moving forward. Never accept less than who you are. Live your best life. Hey. Be strong and free. The Hits Pack with Nahash Black is sponsored by Atlantis Paradise Island, the Ministry of Health, Fidelity Bank Bahamas, Cable Bahamas, Rev Christmas, AML Foods Limited, SMG Caribbean, Nassau Tile, CJ Atlantic, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, BD and JS Johnson. I'm your host, Nahaja Black. It is a beautiful day here in the 242. I hope that you are doing well, taking care of yourself, and living your best life. We've got a good full show for you today. I got my good friend, C.A. Nuri, who will be joining me at the top of the show. And then, of course, the second half of the show, not of course, you don't know this, on the second half of the show, I've got some uh, good guests, some brand, well, a brand new guest, and one that's a fan favorite, Dr. Gia Jones will be joining us first time she will be joining us. And then, of course, Dr. Edrika Richardson. So we'll be dealing with a lot of things. It's a very good show for you today. But before we go any further, I want to bring on my good friend and sometimes host of The Hit Back. I want to bring him on, Mr. Hubert Edwards. Hubert, welcome to The Hit Back, buddy. How are you? Um, it's a pleasure to be here, Nahaja. It's good to be sitting across from you. I can't remember uh, being interviewed by you over a, the social media network. So, you know, I'm stepping up, I'm moving up. And so I'm, 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 I'm glad to be here with you. I, I think it's a little stretch when you say you're stepping up, my friend. You, you know, we go way back. So I love you. Yeah. Listen, all right. So Hubert, of course, one of the great things about you is that when I, you know, you were one, just for the record, you were in my, in the heyday of my radio, starting in radio. Many who don't know this, you were the first person to ever interview me. And yes. so I thank you for that. So you were the first one to say, hey, let me find out more about this young lady. And okay. thank you, because nobody ever asked me questions. Bucket list ticked off. <laughs> Indeed. Hubert Ed Edwards joining me on the show. So Hubert, you do this thing now. You've been doing this for the past, what, four, five? I feel like you've been doing well, this for a long it's, time. It's kind of like four years, because when we started the first one, it was in December. But it's actually five events. This is going to be the fifth event. Wow. Fifth event. And we've been doing it. You've still been doing it in the midst of, uh, you know, the pandemic. Tell us a bit about this, uh, the success event, this leadership event that you put on uh, every year. Tell us a bit about it. Well, Success Summit was kind of dreamed up and came out of a vision of a desire to help persons to get to a place where you can now start to help to unfold your own becoming. And we thought it would be a good thing to start having these events, but importantly, do it in a way where there are local persons who are on the stage speaking to individual persons who you are likely to buck up in the supermarket, on the street, individual who you can connect with and you can understand exactly where they're from and where they're going and where they have been. And so we put this together and we figure you know it's a it's a good thing in the first year we you know beginners luck we did well and then we said you know maybe there is more to this and so we added the dimension of offering scholarships and then we expanded to doing the leadership um, awards and so the, the scholarship is the biggest aspect of it from from a from a cause perspective this year we are we are offering scholarship grants to four different um, five students and so, you know, that's that's really, in a way, our means, my means of, you know, connecting with the community and giving back to individuals who are at a place where I was at one point in time. Yeah. And, you know, I think one of the great things about it is, of course, like you said, giving back, but creating those venues where people can continually, you know, empower and improve themselves. Uh, what is so fascinating and so wonderful, Hubert, is that your lineup it shows some power, so many powerhouses of, of speakers 
uh, predominantly Bahamian. And so it really does shine a light on the, 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 uh, the depth of our uh, intellectual prowess and the substantial meatiness of our public speakers. Um, mm -hmm. I want to ask you this. When you, did you see the vacancy when you decided to do this? Did you think that, hey, there is a vacancy that I can fill with an event like this? Um, you know, you all, I think you may have heard it said, right, that my, my ideas were never my own. Um, this idea that we are kind of building and growing here came out of the brain of a young lady called Michelle Miller. And Michelle Miller was a, a life coach and an individual who spent a lot of time dealing with young people. She would have pulled herself up in a significant way from where she used to live over the hill, uh, working at Sunderland and became uh, a professional with the financial services arena. And we were just having this conversation and said, wouldn't it be good if we were able to put together an event where Bahamians are speaking side by side with persons like, um, you know, Les Brown and so on and so forth. And out of that came this idea, of, hey, why don't we kind of make it indigenous so that we can give opportunities for us to be showcased in? And so they, the number of persons that you see on it from, from the Bahamas, from the Caribbean, from the region, or persons at, uh, attached to the, the African diaspora broadly. It's not, by, it's not by chance, and we're not carving out anybody. We are looking internally first for the talent because we believe that the talent is here, and we also believe that the commitment is significantly here. Uh, you know, one of the unique things you will hear when we speak about the persons who are presenting, we refer to them as success advocates. And the reason for that is because we want these individuals to advocate to other individuals on their own success. And so it's the, it's it's a level of obligation that we take on beyond just turning up, making a few um, speeches, giving some tips here and there, and then go away. We are really serious about attracting individuals who are fundamentally committed to the advancement of other persons. Yeah. So tell us now the event, some of the persons, the lineup and the date so people can register, and it's all virtual, yeah? It's all, well, we are inviting persons who would like to and who are comfortable to turn up in person. We are, we'll be using BFM as our streaming central. So it's going nice. to be a hybrid. So if you're comfortable, we can hold a whole lot of persons inside that room, properly social distance. So, you know, we would like to have a mix, a, a hybrid. And so here, for the first time, we are doing two days. And the first day is going to be done in collaboration with Dr. Um, Dave Burroughs and his high-rise organization, and that's focused on youth. And so on that day, we have Dr. Burroughs himself. We have Carlos Palacios. We have Miss um, Cheryl Carroll. We have a couple of persons out of Jamaica. And we have a young man, a mentee of mine, as far away as um, Nigeria. And he will be making a short presentation uh, to, to the young people. And then on day two is where we pull out all of the big guns. We have persons like Anastasio Palacios. We have yeah, yeah. Mr. Franklin Butler. We have a gentleman coming in from Nigeria who is a mentee of Dr. Miles Monroe, Alex Yama. We have persons again out of Jamaica, Victoria Mullins from here, Simone Bow. We have Troy Strong. We have Jeffrey yeah. Beckles. We have a quantum psychologist coming in from Jamaica, Mr. Lakem Samaj. And um, we have actually, we have the president-elect for Toastmasters International, Matt Kinsey, who is returning this year again oh, wow. to be on the program. And so, you know, we are very global, as, it, uh, as the mm -hmm. name says. And we're looking forward for individuals to come out in big numbers. Last year, we were in six countries, as far away as China. And so wow. this year, we want to be in 10, 15 countries. We were over, we were just on the 500 attendees last year. This year, we want to make it a 1,000 or more. And so we are calling on principal, we are calling on teachers to bring the students out on day one especially so that they can, you know, soak up this, the tips and the strategies and the practical ideas which will be shared with them. And so, you know, we're looking forward to that. We're also looking forward to giving out the awards for the scholarship grant five this year. And we also looking forward to the leadership um, awardees who I can mention um, at this point in time, our leadership excellence awardees who will be presented with a trophy in honor of 
Dr. Miles Monroe, in, rec in, in remembrance of Dr. Miles Monroe, will be Tanya McCartney, Ivelyn Kassar, Keith Major, and Dr. Dave Boris. And on the other side, it will be a Marcus Garvey Robert Love Memorial Award that goes to a diaspora person, an individual who was born outside of the Bahamas, mm -hmm. but who came to the Bahamas and contributed significantly. And our two awardees there will be Clem Foster and Patrick Hanlon. All right. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I'm so excited for everyone. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, you know, I got to ask CA when I get a trophy. I got to figure out what, what I need to do to get a trophy nowadays. You know, I, I know what I'm you see all of those I, trophies behind you. Um, I don't think you need any more. <laughs> Listen, hey, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go downstairs in the Guardian. You know, you know, we have the print masters. I'll make yes. my own. I'm a, I'm a very, you know, diplomatic woman. Hubert, tell folks what is the schedule like? What is the uh, not the schedule, but the the uh, dates so that they can well, register the, and where they can register quickly okay. for me. The dates are December 3rd and 4th, so next week, Friday and Saturday will be the dates. You can register by going to nlsolutionsbahamas.com. That's nlsolutionsbahamas.com. You will see a link for the summit. Click on that, and it will shoot you to Zoom where you will be able to register. Or alternatively, you can find me on, on Facebook, Hubert Edwards, and you will find multiple postings with links available for you to register. We are recommend to register so that we know exactly how yeah. much we need to extend our, our our zoom platform but you know we're looking forward to impacting hundreds of persons this year it will certainly do us good as we get prepared for 2022 yeah and every year it's a still it's just gotten better and better each year and the fact that you guys have been able to pull through and and even grow uh during the time of covid is just an exceptional uh recommendation and commendation sorry to to your planning and prowess, Hubert Edwards. And uh, Hubert, you, you did give me one of my best guests. So I, I definitely thank you for that, my friend. We have some more for you. Some of those, some of these same persons will be available to you. Uh, oh. Quantum psychologists, international presidents, they will certainly be here on Nahaja Black, with the it back with Nahaja Black. What? Man, that's why I love you, buddy. Thank you so much, Hubert. One more time, where do folks go again? NL nlsolutionsbahamas.com. That's nlsolutionsbahamas.com. Sign up there and we will be ready to rock and roll. It's going to be, it's going to be, as we have done in the past, a fantastic thing. We refer to this mind shift moment where you start to move your mind from where you are to where you wish to be. And so yeah. if we can help along the way and facilitate that, that's what this is all about. Hubert, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I think I might have a caller. Let's see if this caller... Uh, call, you're on the head back. Welcome. Yes, thank you. You're doing an awesome job, um, especially um, with the success program that you just mentioned about. I'd like to call mm -hmm. to congratulate uh, Mr. Clement Foster, um, and I would like to also underscore that he is the Bahamian according to the Constitution of the Bahamas. And so mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to Mr. Edwards. And the awardee, former awardee, uh, Mr. Dr. DeVoe, the primary school student of the year, last year. And mm -hmm. it's an awesome program, and I will follow it, and I would like to know more about the scholarship so I can tell the students about it. All right. Thank All right, you. real quick. Thank you so much, Colin. Um, I guess we will. And, but Hubert, you know, next week, of course, you'll be joining me again on the show. So we'll have a little bit more time to go into detail with the program, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Hubert. And again, you are, you know, exceptional. And this, I'm going to register. I'm getting set to register. So I have yes. to be a part of it this year. Thank you Thank so you. much for having me, Nahaja. I know you're stressed for time, but, you know, certainly a pleasure to be here. And, you know, whatsoever um, is given to us, we have to find a way of giving it back to society. And so this is what we're trying to achieve. Amen. Thank you. Hubert Edwards, special guest joining us on the show. You're listening to The Hit Back with Nahaja Black. When we come back, CA Nuri will be joining us. And uh, I want to get your thoughts. We got a lot of news today. I was uh, yesterday, I didn't touch on it yesterday, but today we will have that discussion. We've got appointments, uh, appointments, and uh, Baby Bella drama. And I got some news for you on that as well. We'll be back right after this.
Throughout our lifetime, we must all make decisions. No matter how we choose, the right one just needs to be made. Like having J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers as your insurance partner. We've been serving the Bahamas for over 100 years. Whether you need home, motor, marine, or commercial insurance, make the right decision. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S.C., 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 Johnson Insurance. We are working to protect our country, our people, and our livelihoods so that we can move forward. The vaccine is safe. The vaccine is easy. The vaccine is essential for our recovery. If we want to rebuild our economy, if we want to get back to our jobs, if we want to get back to our lives, our families, we must do this together. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and they set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there were no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number, they see you as a part of family. I'm going on with my life. That's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. This traffic report is brought to you by Shield Insurance and Prudential Law Suggestors. You know, if we're looking at traffic now, it's really busy everywhere across New Providence this time. But it's a Friday afternoon, and that's what you expect on Fridays. So riding along Wolf Road from the west in Ponce on the drive all the way to the east end, it's a slow ride near Buffalo Bumper in some places. Marathon Road is filled in both lanes, both heading north into the city and heading south coming out. That intersection at Wolf Road, Soldier Road, Village, and Bernard Road is all busy in the traffic light. All lanes that are leading into that traffic light is busy. And Soldier Road itself, off Prince Charles, all the way into East Street and across to Blue Hill Road is a busy thoroughfare in both lanes. The roundabouts coming off both E Street and Blue Hill Road, busy on all sides. Tony's William Dolly on the west side for Blue Hill Road, along with the Blue Hill Road south traffic. Then there's Independence Drive on the east lanes going into the East Street roundabout while you've got East Street South. Heavy traffic coming through there. We're in the south now. Over the hill on Blue Hill Road, it gets really slow. Passing Soldier Road and going into that Carmichael Road intersection. Same thing is happening on East Street south of Soldier Road. Busy in both lanes. Go slow in either lane. You're riding the brakes the entire route. Over on the coastline, West Bay Street, you're riding the brakes in a slow ride from about Fort Charlotte all the way past the roundabout there at Saunders Beach. And even downtown right now, traffic is a little bit slow through the downtown area. But as it gets further up on East Bay Street, it slows up passing the bridge and you get a slow ride going through Montague and getting through that traffic light there. But no surprises, this is what you expect on a Friday afternoon. Just take your time driving about out there. No major collision or detours that we have been advised about will get in your way at this hour. This NASA traffic report, a service of Beyond Flags this hour. Customer appreciation is going on now with a 20 to 50% store wide sale. They're located next door to Columbus Priory. Call them at 308 8250. That's 308 8250. Beyond Flags on Facebook and Instagram. With your eyes, Sky, look at traffic in real time at VAAA. Michael was in a horrible car accident. Prudential Law Suggesters managed his claim and got him the settlement he deserved. Sierra's roof received hurricane damage. Thanks to Prudential, she and her kids are happy with their claim settlement. Tammy fractured her ankle in a slip and fall. Prudential saved her time, money, and peace of mind. Prudential Law Suggesters are here for you whenever a tragedy strikes. Call 322-4026 now. Don't wait for disaster to strike. This hurricane season, be ready. Protect your home with an affordable and comprehensive home insurance policy from Shield Insurance. You can't control what nature blows your way, but with Shield Insurance, you can rest easy as you ride out the storm. Protect your largest and most valuable investment. Don't take a chance. Put your home in our hands. Shield Insurance agents and brokers in Nassau. Call 356-7202 or Freeport 352-5945. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. It's a hit back with the hash of black. It's a hit back with the hash of black. It's a hit back with the hash of black. It's the hit back with Nahasha Black. And 
We're back. You're listening to The Hit Back with Nahaj of Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. I'm going to welcome my good friend, C.A. Nuri, with me today. C.A., what's up, buddy? Unmute your mic. I know you start. You always start, and you don't unmute. Uh, the mouse wasn't working, but I, I, I saw it coming. I saw it coming, but there was a slow delay, but I, I'm here now. I'm here now, and I'm always excited to be on your show, and thanks very much for the, the, the invite. I did notice... The, the little note that C.A. Nuri co-hosts. So I, 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 I'm flattered by that, but I'm letting you know that I'm noticing these small overtures, and I, and I appreciate it, you know, I appreciate it. Look at that. You mean, the, you mean a small plus, plus. co-host? Yeah. Yeah. Co-host. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have put... I would have put your photo there, but it would have been a lot of faces. I understand. So, yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no I, I'm moving up in the world. I, yeah. And I, I, I just letting you know, I appreciate that little gesture. And I'm smiling. If I was light skinned, you would have seen all of this be kind of red there. But you know, it is what it is. We don't. We just. We just have to tell people when we blushing, buddy. Yes. Nobody really sees it. I you. am indeed blushing, even though you cannot yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. I always say, black girl blushing. You have to announce it, buddy. Nobody oh, you knows it. it's happening. Okay. You have to announce it. It's yes. just. You know, blame it on the melanin. How you doing? It's good to see you. It is what? good to be on the radio once more again, and it's good to be interacting with you, talking about topical um, topics happening to the Bahamas right now. So I'm game. Yeah, Nicole says you've earned it, TA. Yes, you I have it. earned it. Hey, Nicole, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, well done, Mr. Nuri, on your there appointment you go, as Mrs. co-host. There's a co-host appointment. It's an appointment. Oh. It's an appointment. It's a, you know, it's an appointment. <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But these ones don't get paid. No. But it's an appointment. Yes. No, it's a small A. Small yes. A. Yes. <laughs> Lowercase, all the way. Yes. But happy that you said yes. Yes, you know? yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm flattered. <laughs> well, we got some appointments to discuss today. So yesterday, the big news was Loretta butler Turner has been, uh, she was there at the press conference. I didn't see it coming. You know, I've got to, I'm questioning my friendship with Clint now. I'm questioning my friendship. You know, uh, Crystal says it's truly a new day because Clint don't sip sip anymore. I used to get sip sip when Clint was, you know, BTH, but now he's government. That brother don't leak news. I Give I, it I, time. I, we know that there are a lot of leaks coming from that office of the prime minister. So any minute now, all kind of leaks will be happening. They have, no, yeah. have yet to plug that place. But yeah. I knew, I, I saw it coming. I saw an appointment coming for LBT. How did I miss that though? I I'm did not, not sure. I did not. There were so many hints. hints. So many hints. When at the swearing in ceremony at, 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 at the big hotel, mm-hmm. right? I saw her, she, she was brisk and bold sitting there. And I yeah, was wondering, but, yeah. yeah, and I was wondering, hey, um, usually someone of, of her status, even if she goes to the tent, was sitting in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You act like you're not really there. Yeah, you have to do the, the Baptist finger road. when you dip. And, uh, and of course, the media pick it up, social media uh-huh. also pick it up. Say, like, hey, uh-huh. you, did you see LBT? Yeah. The LBT is in the front row and it's swearing in. So, you know, automatically my, my air started wiggling. Yeah. Right? And I said, hey, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Some appointment yeah. coming soon. I then, did not see it. I, then she I went really on the rounds. Didn't. She went on the rounds on the radio stations and mash up minutes. <laughs> Every child she got. And I say, hey, this woman get an appointment soon. No, yeah. man, but I, listen, my thing is mashing up the uh, Dr. Minutes was not even, no one needed an appointment to do. You just, I thought it was like our civic duty to yeah. have Dr. Minutes removed as prime minister of the country. I think that then, like, we can't do this anymore. Like, he has to go. So I I, I did not see it that way. I just saw it as Loretta yeah. Butler Turner told us before he became prime minister that he was not going to be a good leader. And now she's and she's, psychic. Right. she's a psychic woman. Uh, a number of us knew, uh, you know, a number of us knew and uh, we did not listen to her. Right. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and, and she, she was also psychic again to say that um, she appreciate the, the, the PLP's plan. I believe it was a good plan. She said it beforehand and, mm-hmm. and, and it panned out. The lady is, uh, is a, a, what is a suit sale. She can see into the future. She knows when the wind, of, the wind of change is happening. And, and congratulations you know, to her. She deserves it. I believe she's a competent person to, to assist in, 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 in this endeavor she's doing. And, I, and, and as a strong Bahamian woman, I celebrate her. Don't mind yeah. the antics and the, and the comedy and whatever it is, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I believe that she's capable. And I believe she will do a wonderful job where she's appointed. 
Yeah, and I I want to second that as well because of course I think it's wise on the government's behalf to use her and to use whatever political capital or clout that she may have, and um, where it also shows an under um, you know a, a level of maturity with the egos, right? Um, because Loretta Butler Turner is someone who who's a formidable uh, yes. person. She's a formidable uh, Bahamian and comes with her own level of stature. And so in any way where you see, and for me, I look at these things. So I look at these things from a, a, a they single signal a lot of things to me, right? So one, Madam Butler Turner doesn't need a job. No. Okay. No, what? she doesn't what? need a job. She doesn't what? need a job. Um, she went back to the family business. Uh, it, yeah, that, but that's a family that's nice my point. business. She, nice she could business. go back to the family business. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't the money. The money wasn't the same. The money wasn't the same. No, there's not no. something that's confirmed. No, I'm just saying that this consultant job, <laughs> this is about an 80k. No, 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 no. no but I, I don't listen. The consultant job isn't free. I never said it was free. I, I believe All she went on this. But wait, can you just wait? Let me. I just said she went. You, that's, that's, all right. That's not, I didn't say she wasn't going to win. Okay. I didn't say she isn't winning. Yeah. Okay. What I'm saying is that is though. You, to do this, you understand that there will be some pushback. You decide if this is what you want to do. You decide if this is how you're going to do what you want to do. And you decide if this is the person which you wish to work under. Okay? Because Madam Butler Turner had an option to work under Dr. Menes, I'm sure, in some other capacity. But she would not have taken it. I'm sure there was a capacity where there was offerings, man. Come on. I think you decide who you wish to work under. And she has decided with this move that she respects, I think, this is what I would see from the outside looking in, that perhaps she does respect uh, uh, PM Davis, because I, I, I always want to say Brave Davis, uh, Prime Minister Davis, he's sufficient enough to submit to this his level of leadership. Of course now, she is winning. I figure this job ain't free. And she's a consultant, so there ain't no nine to five either. <laughs> you know, but as uh, I think it's interesting, but let's, let's let's play this. Let's play this. I have got to tell you very clearly that as an independent um, candidate in the last election I participated in, obviously, you know, I would no longer have been aligned with e with the FNM. And I've had four and a half to five years to look at what the previous party I had been a part of had done. I loved, I truly loved, this is no secret, I loved the PLP's blueprint for a new day. And I believe that if I can help to make that a reality, then yes, there would be, there's definitely that shift that you'd like to know about. <laughs> that, that was the shift. Oh, you almost see hungry, yo. That was the shift. <laughs> that was the shift, and she announced in the shift. Right? Yeah, but yeah. I, I I would be uh, amiss if I did not mention how the FNM party treated LBT um, mm -hmm. when she vied for leadership, right? Mm -hmm. It was brash, it was harsh, and she was rejected, and she's mm -hmm. uh, wholesomely rejected by the entire party. And, and not by the, when I say the party, entire party, I don't mean the membership, I mean no. the the executive part. Right, mm -hmm. I remember. Um, um, I remember a K. Peter Turnquest speech on the on the convention stand, mm -hmm. and tears welled up in my eyes and said, "My look at this strong F and M woman, and how they treated her." Right. I mean, they said and, some and, terrible things about this woman, and you sort of think she was not someone who was still F and M. Like I, I. It was amazing, and, and, and especially how she matriculated a, hit, a family history to join the FNM and being a team player to leave in a safe seat to go to Long Island as a part mm -hmm. of the team player, they should have um, welcomed her back, made some overtures to say, well, um, that was that was war, political war then, but we are family and no overtures is made. So I have no, no angst about her, the PLP reaching out to her and mm -hmm. try to attempt to bring her into full because I understand what she went through. I, I can appreciate that. And I also would like to say that uh, uh, the Prime Minister, Philip Davis, knows talent. 
-hmm. He's politically savvy. He's smart. Um, he's a man who gives people opportunity. This is his character, right? Mm -hmm. So I can see him moving forward and say, hey, let's get get with her and see if we can make a room under our tent. And that's, uh, that's a testimony also to, to Mr. Davis. Uh, you know, I critique everybody, but I, yeah. I, I, I must say that these are characteristics of both men and, and lady and uh, that we need to remind, remind people about. Yeah, and you know, that's what, for me, I, I see it as a lot of maturity, right? One of those things that we haven't seen in recent years where there isn't, there, the insecurity led to a lot of poor decision-making uh, where ego trumped reason. And I think that what you're seeing is a lot of savvy. You're right. By consider that consider we now have Wendell Jones as the uh, appointed as the ambassador to the United States. I didn't see it. I don't think anybody saw that coming. I, I don't think anybody saw that coming. But before we get to that, finishing off and rounding off, uh, you know, um, uh, Madam Butler Turner. I think that, that that is very wise and it shows great strength. And I think it also signals it continually to the party and the Bahamian people that we, the, this administration is looking for strength and female strength and leadership. And wherever it is, I hope that this is what it means, you know, that wherever it lies, they will seek it out, you know, and we will see. And, and uh, I go with this being a lot of political capital as well, um, being savvy enough to know that this is strength here. And, um, we will watch it and see. Uh, now, of course, her appointment um, is one where she consults the Small Business Development Center. And I thought it was curious. I didn't get a chance. And this is on all honesty. And see, you can let me know um, what they found or believe is her niche, why she would need to be the consultant for this area. Did, did you get did you get that? I, <laughs> I was I thought I missed it. They didn't say anything. There was no prerequisite. No, no, no detail uh, <laughs> uh, curriculum by any. They say, well, this one is qualified. She was selected because she was selected. And kudos to her. And I'll stop right there. She's talented. I'm sure she um, she has skills. Just that they didn't outline what the skills is and why she was chosen. Yeah. Okay. Well, way to go, Loretta. Loretta again, I, I know we got in another segment, we can talk about the skills that... Um, that um, uh, Wendell Jones bring, Jones bring. I don't know those skills either, but I mean, uh, it is what it is. I believe he's talented, uh, but that's I, I won't move there until well, we reach that. We section. can talk about that too, because I I think we already know that a lot. But come on now, y'all know how them positions go. Yeah, All yeah. Right. And, and that's why I said I embrace um, uh, Miss Miss LBT. I, I mm -hmm. should shorten the name. I, I embrace that um, she's talented. Yeah, someone says I love uh, Minister Pia role too. She will go very far. Professional, very calm and balanced. Uh, we're going to go to a break. Someone says, who will, who would have wanted uh, LBT to remain with them after what went down in our last convention and then going to the GG behind the FNM leadership's back to become opposition leader? You should have listened to her, though. You might have had a second term, but the former prime minister will go down as the worst prime minister in the history of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And God help you, apparently there's always room at the end in that number because we thought that Barry Christie was the worst. Then comes Dr. Minnis. I hope, uh, you know, the prime minister now stays on top of his game because apparently there's room at the bottom because <laughs> his brothers just like to dig holes. You're listening to The Hit Back with Nahaja Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We'll be back right after this. already get more channels, more sports, and more speed. Now, we're giving more Christmas with up to $250,000 in cash and prizes. Sign up or upgrade to Rev Trio to win prizes like rent and mortgage payments, trips to see your favorite sports teams, plus up to $20,000 in our Rev Cash Vault. Want to win more Christmas? Call 601-8992 today and ask for Rev Trio. Rev you and us together. At Fidelity, the holidays are all about family, spending time with loved ones, and being thankful for the little things in life. Worrying about bills should be the last thing on your mind, especially during the holidays. 
Let Fidelity help you get your bills under control. Fidelity can also get you started with a real savings plan that actually pays you interest. The only thing you need to think about is what you will do with the savings in your pocket this Christmas. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fidelity Bank is here for you this holiday season because you are family and family is important to us. Food security is a challenge for many. Now in a pandemic, many more are unsure of their next meal. Through their Feed 5000 program and a $20,000 donation, AML is working to ensure that everyone has a meal for the holidays, and they're inviting you to help. Now until December 17th, visit any Solomon's, Costrite, Fresh Market, or Domino's in Nassau or Freeport, and Exuma Markets in Georgetown to donate and help feed a family in need this Christmas. No amount is too small. Remember, we're all in this together. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. listening to the hit back with Nahaja Black. It's Friday, y'all. I hope that you are doing well, taking care of yourself, that you're planning on being safe, but enjoying this weekend, y'all. Enjoying the weekend. Enjoy it for what it is. The weather is changing. It feels a little bit like Christmas already. CA, I went to the store. My co-host, my co-host, my co-host, CA Nuri, my favorite person in all of radio and eh, world is a stretch, but very close. Very close. <laughs> CA Nuri. I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won famous. Yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll talk about it after the show. Okay. Uh, famous, I know. famous I know. coming. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Shout out to the family. Love your wife and kids. Yep, okay. yep. She listening to you right now. Yep, Anybody yep. can start text. I can get a text and say, what, what's up with all this, this spreading thing? Yep, any minute. <laughs> Look, heavy A, you know, what do you call it? A vino lotion. I go and have quality, quality lotion. And my good friend on the show with me today. All right, so... See, just as a side note, I was going to mention, you know, I went to the food store last night, right? Evening time. You know, it's dark early now, so technically it ain't evening. Just right after the show, right? So I go to the food store. Christmas trees are out. Lights are about. And it was chilly, buddy. I felt like I was away for like two split seconds. You could tell I've been on a plane in two years. This has been tough. I need a vacation. I need a vacation. It was a side note. I so, thought okay. you took a cruise recently. That <laughs> You know, I love Long Island, San Sal, everywhere, but that don't really exist. The food was great, though. I could do that again, but we digress. All right, buddy. So, of course, the next big uh, news is that um, uh, Wendell Jones has been tapped, tagged, uh, appointed um, ambassador to ambassador to the United States. Big time. Big time. Not no little spot. Big time. Wendell Jones is big time up. Congratulations to Wendell Jones. I ain't gonna know. That's I ain't a big position. That's a big position. I ain't gonna nothing bad to say. I ain't gonna nothing bad to say. Um, congratulations. Did you see that? I didn't see that coming either. No, I did not see that coming. <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> uh, I think uh, the, the government coming out of left field with some of these men. Is that why you think that they're taking their time? No, I think they lax in taking the time. So they need to correct that. Um, um, I would have assumed, mm-hmm. me, um, analyzing things, that perhaps the, 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 the newspaper would have received a couple of government ads, you know? <laughs> that was a payback for itself, you know? Um, but instead, uh, mm-hmm. he got a big, big ambassador position, and uh, that, that surprised me. That came out of, out of, out of the blue. Oh, you, oh, okay, slow, slow moment. I forget that he has a paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have, you have a right. whole media conglomerate. I know, I know, I know that one. Yeah, and, I just, and radio and, and TV. Thing. I forgot the paper. I forgot the paper side. Yeah, yes. a lot of people forget about the news that hit about his newspaper. No one tends to buy it. I didn't. I mean, why you had to say it like that? I'm, I'm just saying. Since you've gone you down know, that road, you I didn't go down that road. road. I was just stating that I forgot about yeah, it. You forgot it because a lot of people forget it. You know, you so traps. You try to get people in trouble. You know, this is Good Friday. Give, the, give that paper away free. Nobody to pick it up there either. I know because I used to get it for the dog, you know, lying to, you know, since it was free. 
and you're forcing people to get it. The new ambassador, uh, Jason get from Superwash. Just moving along, moving along, moving along. Moving along. Moving along. CA, it was don't disrespect the ambassador like that. No, yeah, ambassador yet. <laughs> I can do my dues now. But um, my, I want to say congratulations to him. I, I think that he's capable of doing a job and he will represent the Bahamas well. I believe that he's brilliant. Um, you see, he's a, he's a ultimate a consummate professional and, mm-hmm. and, and he'll do well. What I have issues with, mind you, is not an issue. I just want to make a commentary on it. Uh, mm-hmm. Recently, you interviewed the ambassador to China, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. she gave her resume on how she was selected to be the ambassador to China. And you happened to invited me to speak right after her, well, after your interview. And I said, my God, you see this woman resume? Mm-hmm. This lady did, it was a professional in terms of the steps she took to become ambassador, right? Everything was mm-hmm. uh, was a public service and 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 protocol and whatever else they, they need for ambassadors. Uh, in the Bahamas, we picked them at whim. Former police officer here, former newspaper boy here, you know, one doctor there. No, no type of criteria. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you just go there and put your signature on things. You straight. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and I mind you, I have no problem with that though, because one of these days, I want to be an ambassador too. And they will say, mm-hmm. oh, somebody used to work in tourism. You know, you know, he, he used to, he, he used to move glass, so he qualified, you know, put food on the table, you know, move bags, and that makes him competent of being an ambassador to represent the Bahamas. You know, I, I, I see that in my future. <laughs> you say, see, so you move glass? <laughs> well, I, I am food and beverage. I move glass every so often. And say, no, no, you can't sit there. You know? You got some, you can go inside. You know? The right to refuse. No, because I would refuse and Rodney Monk come, come in my restaurant. No, 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 you can't come inside here. Oh, like that you know what, I can't take you. No. I can't take you today. You're taking up space. <laughs> you come outside. That's too much coffee you're drinking for free. That's me. I, I would, in my restaurant, I, I, I do that. You can't be drinking coffee for, inside here for free. There ain't no refills. <laughs> but I, I digress. But continue. Continue. <laughs> now you want me to continue? Yeah, yeah. Mm. this is your show. Why would you, <laughs> you know what? I don't like you. All right? And Rose is right. Wendell Jones is one of the smartest men in the Bahamas. He will no, do we well. We have a listen. lot of smart men in the Bahamas. Man, well, listen. Uh, we let me have, tell you. you know, some smart men in the Bahamas. Smart, smart men and women. And women. We, and women. we definitely have... Uh, and uh, So, okay. Let's just be... Okay, let's be realistic. Because honestly, I kind of am over... This has been going on for so long, Cecil. Right now, the fact that Mr. Jones is as competent as he is, as smart as he is, I'm okay with this. Yeah. We've had some who literally, you ask, you will ask what about what the embassy has been doing, and you will get nothing. You now, can, mind you, you we're not... the police officers again, right? Them, them former I wasn't talking... Listen, you man. Call no names. Listen. You don't call no names, okay? I, no, no. No. I ain't calling no names. Okay. okay? All right? Um... But we have had some who where you're like, okay, well, obviously this 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 embassy ain't gonna be doing much. No, it ain't gonna be doing much. Um, and we're not new with this, you know. I had when I had Professor Griffin on day before, was it day before yesterday, day before yesterday. Uh, Professor Griffin from Washington um, America University he used to be a, an advisor to President Clinton and um, Secretary of the U.S. the Democratic Senate, whatever. His no, thing was. Is Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his thing is, so we remember we're talking about should we have an ambassador or whatnot. Now, he actually admitted that we could, the Bahamas should get a seasoned veteran in terms of foreign relations from the United States to be the ambassador, or we will end up getting an ambassador who was just an appointment. So it shows that they do the same thing. They just put their, they put their friends there as well if it ain't mean nothing. Now, um, with our relation, now, I think it's good for him. Good for the, the ambassador, Wendell Jones. I think he's a very competent uh, Bahamian. And I hope to see what the uh, foreign policy is in the United States. Good for him. I know it ain't freeze on your side. You have anything I else? Know, you want it, to it, let's let you know. Yeah, listen, it, it froze. 
You see, I'm not moving. Watch, let me do it again. Uh, listen, I'm happy for him. Good for him. Good for Loretta Butler Turner. Uh, yeah, let's man. see what our foreign policy is on. In uh, fact, I you. have a number of PLP friends who are waiting for their day, who are competent too. Doctors, lawyers, you know, uh, mm -hmm. who are professionals who are waiting for this administration to, to acknowledge them because they were in the trenches working, making okay. sacrifices. And right? you know what? I heard you say this before. I heard you say this before. And I'm curious as it to, is. you know, you, I'm very curious as to who these people are in the trenches. Um, because now the question is, do we just, is that like, isn't that politics as usual? So, you know, you were working in the trenches and everybody got to eat. And so now the taxpayers pay for everyone to eat because you worked in the trenches. Do we work for free anymore? No, nobody works for free anymore, right? Not at that level. No. Yeah. We have a call on the line. Let's get this call. Call you on the hit back. Welcome. Hi. Um, a pleasant good afternoon, Amaja, and your guest. Um, good afternoon. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes. You're, you're okay. live and on the air. Yeah, Welcome, I, buddy. I, I'm, I'm sharing a concern about um, um, Mr. Nuri's expression on the, the ambassador, um, Mr. Wendell Jones. And it is that I, I, I completely disagree with your expressions, Cecil. Um, um, Mr. Jones is a seasoned veteran journalist who understands policy, who understands diplomacy, who, exper who is also experienced in dealing in these areas. Um, um, he is someone who understands protocol, who understands order, he is someone who is most experienced in a wide-ranging, a wide-sweeping range of areas that would be important to advancing our foreign affairs and our foreign policies and our initiatives to help to promote the Bahamas, something that he's been doing for 40, 50 years of his life. And so I think Mr. Jones is extremely suited for that position. He's very well suited for that position. He's experienced and he's proven himself. He's also a very successful behemoth businessman. And I believe that as behemoths, we ought to be fit to uplift and lift up each other when we are being placed in platforms to help advance the country rather than to seek to publicly break down each other when we are doing positive or being placed in positions to pursue positivity and progressiveness and growth on behalf of the country. And so, Cecil, I would encourage you to be mindful when you speak about persons who are being elevated in the country, people who have proven themselves in the country, not people who are just coming out of nowhere, who have no experience, no know-how, who have no integrity, who hasn't, who hasn't one lick of, of, of gratitude towards nationalism and patriotism in this country, but are being elevated similarly to what happened in the previous administration with the disastrous four years and three months that we would have all dealt with and been forced to deal with as a result. And so I say kudos to Mr. Jones, and I say kudos to Prime Minister Davis for that exceptional appointment, and I look forward to the other appointments. Thank you for the opportunity, Naja. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I, I like Wendell Jones as an appointment. Antoine is spread thick, doesn't he? I mean, that well, was, that's Antoine now. That's Antoine. That, you know, that Antoine was, coming that on. That crunchy peanut butter. You know? That, you know? That, that crunchy Well, it ain't like my lotion. Yeah. <laughs> ain't like it, my, no, it ain't like lotion. Lotion no. you can rub in. That peanut butter you can't rub in. But I, I want to tell a story. I have a cousin. I have a cousin who has worked in the foreign, the foreign, um, I forget the right word for it. Right, foreign uh, service mission. Foreign service, the Bahamas foreign service for forty. No, she'll make forty years this year. Forty years wow. this year, right? She mm -hmm. has served in Europe. She has served in the United States. Um, any treaty and, and and policy about the Bahamas and foreign foreign policies, she can quote it on like that. In fact, before they make decisions, <laughs> they normally <laughs> call her up and say, hey, "What's your opinion?" Because mm -hmm. of wh what she's qualified for. They never invite her to be no ambassador. I'm just saying. I mean, going through about four or five different administrations, the key person in all of these areas, right? One would assume that you bring people like that. And mind you, we have several people like that in, in, who work in the foreign service, right? Mm -hmm. Who travel the world to represent the Bahamas, who, who helps the ministers to set policies and craft it because this is what they are. Right? Yeah. One would assume, like the United States, like China, 
like the other countries, that they pull from these pool of people and say, hey, let well, me... It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily work like that. You, no. So you have your technocrats... I just said, I just said United States did it and China. Well, again, I, like I said, I just had uh, the foreign policy, uh, well, the, the advisor, one of the advisors, former advisor to President Clinton, who made note that we can either get an ambassador who will be strategic, have that wealth of knowledge that you've discussed, and be strategic in the, the negotiations or management between the, the Bahamas and itself to try and preempt some of whatever concerns they may have with China, or they can have a political appointment. So the United States is like other countries where they have political appointees. However, the ambassador is an emissary of the government, is an emissary in particular in special places who has the air of the leader. So. An ambassador also has to have a relationship. Then they fi they filter that information down into your vice councils or into your, your second secretaries or whatever it may be. They filter that information down to the technocrats who then execute policy. You have some who go to sit in the UN, like, the, like you would have in New York. You'll have some who go and sit in at the UN. And uh, that's their job all day. Learn and get information, determine which treaties we are going to embark on, filter that up to whomever within that, that consulate, and then it goes up to the chain in foreign affairs. So there is a purpose and a function. Now, what, what would be great, and that's why I think Wendell Jones, though he may not have a political, I mean, a foreign service background, is like what's been said, the man ain't no dummy though. Wendell Jones is a very smart man, able to articulate or understand the things that go on in conversation sufficiently. So listen, we've had some, we've had some representatives that you know wasn't representing nothing. Okay? And get just not represent nothing. They represent like upscale corned beef and rice. But other than that, we don't know what was going on in these embassies. So I give credence and kudos to, oh, and it's news time, to uh, you know, um, Mr. Jones. Now, I can't say them other things, but congratulations to Loretta Butler Turner, to Wendell Jones. Let's see what else happens here. Again, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. The Minister of Foreign Affairs was on the show. Um, we have, you know, foreign policy is a big thing. Let's see how it works out. Um, and the United States is a big post. But I got to ask you a question, CA. In all your years, what have we seen come through any of these embassies that'll tell you we have a foreign policy? Uh, initiative on Monday. So there you go. We got to take a break. Thank you, co-host. You, you're going to say bye? People want to hear you say bye. I have the news time. We got to pay for bills. But take care. All right. I got to go. See you later. <laughs> bye. <laughs> This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. You have to be strong in today's world. Strong. Keep your focus and up. What you believe in how, how to achieve all your dreams. Hey. Keep moving forward. Never accept less than who you are. Live your best life. Hey. Be strong and free. It's the hit back. Listening to the hit back with Nahaja Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Getting a lot of feedback uh, from the last conversation there. Getting some folks within Foreign Service chatting with me as well. Um, someone says, Nahaja, I think these appointments need to be presented with the appointees' resumes and portfolios. Otherwise, these are just ceremonial positions to reward to party faithfuls. Yeah, yeah. Um, all I'm saying is, I hope. Wendell could run through woods, shoot, break a lock, and take surreptitious, surreptitious photos of secret plans while he's at some big wig dinner party. Because in the movies, ambassadors are intelligence collectors, and they all have black belts in jujitsu. <laughs> uh, someone says, um, so now Anton has the authority to chase people live on radio. When since Anton wasn't 
chastising people on radio. Um, uh, hello, Nahaja and Mr. CA. You all is good, a good team. Now, Mr. Uh, Loretta Butler Turner, that's the right woman for the job. She's a very intelligent lady. As a matter of fact, I would like to see her as the next prime minister of the Bahamas. She don't feel for words. Good choice. Okay. We got a lot of uh, stuff there. I want to welcome now. We're going to shift gears a bit because, of course, you've heard, um, and we got a quick call. So let me get this caller before I switch gears. Caller, you're on the hit back. Welcome. Yes, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and you? CA, what's going on, CA? CA already left. So it's or, just, or it's just me Asia. now because we got to switch gears. I know you're getting good as a talk show also great, but in Asia, Wendell Jones, hey. right? Wendell Jones, mm-hmm. by far, is the best journalist in his country by far. Guess what I said to Wendell mm-hmm. Jones, teach history, mm-hmm. the man, hey, the man, no history, the Bahamas better than anybody else, anybody else, by far the radio. So Wendell Jones would make a perfect ambassador for the Bahamas. Because you know why? The man knows the Bahamas, and, and furthermore, the man is professional. You know what I'm saying? So anybody, mm-hmm. anybody who knocks on Wendell Jones, they ain't playing the full deck. And then, you're right about the turn now. Congratulations now. I see Mr. Philip Brave, there is proof he is a leader who is bipartisan and looking for the country, okay? Yeah. Thank but you, buddy. I appreciate but, it. But, hey, but Brandon Jones, in the class by himself, can't deal them. I mean, every journalist in the country comes to Jones. Are that so? I, listen, you know I'm not a journalist, so I can't tell you the history, you know, but I know that he I mean, has a, a long history. Brandon Jones been around for, for I mean, from the 70s, you know? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Don't Brandon age Jones the man now. He looked good in the 70s. Don't age him. Hello? Don't age him. I got to switch gears, but I appreciate you, man. Uh, don't age Wendell and say he's been around since the 70s. Y'all aging Wendell. Too much, too much. Thank you so much. All right. We got to switch gears now because you may have also heard some news uh, that um, that's uh, in the, the stories of the day. And I want to bring on two women that I think are going to be excellent in these in some of the discussions on the roundtable. Dr. Adrika Richardson and first time guest on the show. Dr. Gia Jones. I want to welcome both ladies to the show. Ladies, welcome to the Hit Back. Hi. Hey, Gia. Hi. Thank you for having me. Listen, it's a pleasure to have you both on. Uh, We are going to shift gears now because what I haven't made uh, mention of yet, uh, ladies, and uh, Dr. E and uh, Gia both are uh, trained psychologists. Um, They are... Uh, really, they got all of their money and their degrees, and they do an excellent job helping people. You see, look at look at all of them. Look at they, they're rich. You can feel it in the air. Now, <laughs> it is, we got a lot to talk about today, but I want to start with something that is in the news. So on Monday, the show will have an exclusive with the maternal, the hit back with Nahaja Black. I've had a chance to chat with her. I will have an exclusive with the maternal grandmother of baby Bella. So on Monday, we will have that interview. And the maternal grandmother, of course, for y'all who might not catch it, is the mother of the mother of baby Bella. And of course, the news today, it has come out in the news today that uh, the, um, the maternal grandmother is asking for the body to be released to them and not to the father's mother. So we knew that this is, we know already that this is going to be something that is a big uh, drama, unfortunate but that this story has layers and those layers will be revealed. I had a brief conversation with the grandmother yesterday and uh, I will tell you that it's going to be something else when we have this uh, discussion on Monday. But all of that to say that it is a convoluted story and the challenges of, of, because, you know, I asked some questions, some preliminary questions um, uh, pertaining to the daughter you know, um, her relationship as a, you know, her her ability as a mother, you know, what, how all of these things, you know, I ask all kinds of questions now because curiosity has beyond me. And, you know, I have to ask them frank and upfront just so to know that we lay the groundwork for this conversation come Monday. But what it led to, and what we're seeing now is that in the Bahamas, things ain't things, right? No matter how it looks to the surface, everything is layered, relationship stories are deep. Uh, I mean, you peeling back onions and your eye watering. This is just how (laughs) convoluted things ain't things. And something that we would all say would be as simple as burying a child has now become national headlines. And it only made me think about family relationships 
relationships between man and woman. I want to ask both of you this question, and I'll start with you, of course, Dr. E being a resident of the show. I'll start with you. What is your thoughts on, when we think about, uh, you know, family dynamics, right? Family dynamics, the, the way in-laws interact, the way married couple interact. This is so deep and convoluted. If you look at the story from the outside looking in, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the health of the relationship as a whole? Because that's, I, I always want to know, from a shrink's vantage point, from the outside looking in, what would be your thought process on this whole story? Uh, that there's probably a lot of family um, trauma happening on some level. And there, like you said, it's going to take layers to be pulled back to figure out exactly what the impact may be and how it's playing out in generations after. One of the things we noticed always is generational patterns of things. And um, it can be something very small to the fact that you package your groceries a certain way in your refrigerator to so something very big as to how you find and connect in relationships. And so on every level, um, that would be the first thing I would probably be interested in looking at, the generational transmission of trauma. Well, that's a good one. Uh, Dr. Gia Jones, first of all, again, welcome. Thank you. First time on the show, but it won't be the last. Thank you so much. What are your thoughts on it? When you look at it from the outside looking in and you hear about the the machinations right now, the story, and it's ever changing. So let me start by saying, um, and I shared this with you a little bit, Nahaja, that I am a bit removed from <laughs> the various versions of this story. Um, I try to stay out of the um, WhatsApp, uh, I don't even know what to call it, the rumor mill, mm -hmm. because most times there's only like the sliver of truth in it. So from but I will tell you, um, I, I think questions that came to mind really were um, what were the signs before this? What, what, what happened that was brushed off? Um, what happened that was tolerated? Um, those, those are the things that always, because it doesn't, doesn't ever start with an egregious act like what um, ended up happening. There were sometimes more previous egregious acts that didn't result in um, something as horrific as hospitalization and then death. Mm -hmm. But then there were some times that the acts may have been a little more insidious, um, you know, not as kind of clutch my pearls moment, um, but nonetheless from somebody who is in a healthier relationship or somebody who's more self-aware, more emotionally intelligent, or as the therapist sitting outside kind of watching, I'm like, yeah, that that right there was the red flag. Yeah, you know, um, when we talk about yeah, and like I said, I I I think I even need both of you to make sure I know how to maneuver within this discussion because in the brief time chatting with the maternal mother uh, of uh, uh, the maternal grandmother of baby Bella, uh, she also is grieving, right? She's grieving the loss of her grandchild and the loss, the potential loss of her daughter right, uh, found out that the daughter is an identical twin. So there is also those layers uh, there as well, right, uh, that there is another child, uh, a part of this story uh, for the uh, mother of baby Bella. So there's, there's some story, some layers to this story for sure. So then it, it comes to the relationship, right? So questions that I started to ask right away, ladies, was, you know, um, did you all know that there was abuse, right? And... Um, the answer was yes, but they wouldn't leave. She wouldn't leave. She would not leave. And I want to get from you guys the psychology of, 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 of abuse, uh, not just for women, but for men as well. But what is the psychology of abuse? Why do you stay in an abusive relationship? Because I have another question for the, mother, the maternal grandmother was, why would she bring the baby into a situation like that? I'll save that answer for Monday. But what is the psychology of abuse? Why, why do we stay in abusive relationships? Dr. Gia or Dr. E? Who goes first on this one? I tell you, Dr. E is the relationship expert. I said all of my, <laughs> all of the referrals that come to me for couples, I'd be like, 
Dr. E. <laughs> Look at you, you're putting me on the spot. So what I, the first thing I, I'm trying to get the first message out to our, our country, and I'm saying it's our country, is that we need to stop being quiet about abuse on several levels. We have gotten the message that we need to stay out of people's business. And I think that larger message behind that is one of a lack of self-protection and a protection of others. That's why we're so desensitized right now in helping on any mm -hmm. level. We mm -hmm. see people all the time going through stuff. We pull out our phones. We don't help. And so when I think of the whole idea of this, this cycle of violence, some of us really have to take a look at ourselves and say, when was the last time we knew somebody was in a situation and we tried to at least say to them, do you need some help? And do you need some help doesn't mean you necessarily have to get yourself involved, but you put them with the right resources to get them the help they need. I think this, this culture we have that says that, oh, we only could be in the business when I get in the news. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now everybody has a story to tell. We really have to look at ourselves and, and, and these, this family and all of these families now who are experiencing this because the stories that are coming out, I mean, I'm sure G and I have stories for years we can tell of, of the cases we've had, but there have been many family members in different families who still say nothing, who do mm -hmm. not try to help. And, and quite frankly, that's where I'm a little peeved at a lot of us because what have we done to make sure that we understand what protection needs to happen without but still minding our business? Because I think mm -hmm. we can do both. And so when we look at the cycles of abuse, what tends to happen is that abused people tend to come from abused situations on some level. Ah, and so we don't know where the level may have started, but that's what the research typically says is that there is usually some place it started and it could be simple as some of us grew up in households where our parents shouted at us for everything. And we think that level of shouting is normal interaction. And when our partners do it to us, we accept it because that is what we grew up with. Mm -hmm. I can tell you for myself, I did not grow up in a loud household. So when somebody raises their voice at me, I, I get real <laughs> like, like you, this, this is about to go down because I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I, I don't get that because I didn't grow up in that environment. And then I had to get adjusted because I even have girlfriends who are just loud. They're just, their personalities are loud. Mm -hmm. And so when I go around them and their family, I feel sometimes I, I watch myself, I'm, I'm, I'm tense because that's mm -hmm. not the environment I grew up in. And so sometimes we have to look at the environment in which we are, are housing and conditioning our children in and letting them think that that is okay. I saw, mm -hmm. I saw this thing yesterday on social media with, um, by a comedian and, and she made fun of the black mother, right? And how the black mother is always kind of like, she always yelling for some reason. Mm -hmm. And it, it, one of us, on one level it could be, you can see the humor in it. I, I, saw, I thought to myself, wow, that's really seriously the story out there. And, and that post had about 20,000 comments on it saying that is my life. Wow. And, and, and that just speaks volumes to what we have become accustomed to. And I don't, don't want to just think that it's the black mother, but I'm just saying like this, this persona that we think is normal. And you know what? And we'll touch on that. The normal, because I think that you hit on a lot of great points, even with uh, the parenting aspect of it. What is, how does the parenting affect the outcome, the relationships. And I think that this is one of those things where we can really, really drill into this conversation and see the many layers of it when we talk about uh, abuse. And, and, and again, it is not just for my, for all of my brothers who are sensitive on this topic. I know that men get abused. I, I get mm -hmm. that. I really do. And we, we are going to have to really address this and figure out how to help men get out of that cycle of shame as well. So we'll touch on that on the other side of the break. Dr. Gia Jones, y'all know she's the author of one of my favorite books, The Strong Ones. I'm still waiting on Dr. E to tell me which book she writing. So I could also say one of my favorite authors. You're listening to The Hit Back with Nahaja Black. We'll be back right after this. you're not prepared, it can really turn your life upside down. Fortunately, there's CG Atlantic General, 
Our people are here, ready to assist at a moment's notice. With protection like alternative accommodation for those who are displaced due to a storm, it's our priority to make sure you have what you need when you need it most. So when your life gets turned upside down, we can help to turn it around. CG Atlantic General. Good like that. Security and General Insurance Company Limited trading as CG Atlantic General. Contact a CG Atlantic General broker today. We are working to protect our country, our people, and our livelihoods so that we can move forward. The vaccine is safe. The vaccine is easy. The vaccine is essential for our recovery. If we want to rebuild our economy, if we want to get back to our jobs, if we want to get back to our lives, our families, we must do this together. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and they set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number, they see you as a part of the family. I'm going on with my life. That's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. back you're listening to the hit back with nahaja black listen it feels so much like christmas i had to run and get a jacket okay it's just like it's just a little chilly i don't even know what to tell you since i ain't even outside but i want to bring in my good friends now of course brand new to the show and uh will now be a permanent fixture i'm sure dr gia jones and my good friend dr adrika richardson both uh Dr. Dr. Gia, let me make sure I got your title right, because everyone knows Dr. E is the family and marriage, you know, specialist, therapist. She is the one I go to when all of my life troubles collide and she gives me free therapy. She doesn't even know. She doesn't even know. Uh, But (laughs) Dr. Gia, uh, tell us, please, your specialty. Okay, so I can get it can get a little confusing on this side um, because I've got two separate degrees. Um, I have this mm-hmm. master's in mental health counseling, and my primary my primary area is just working with adults. Um, I worked a little bit with couples earlier in my career, um, but have just moved out of that space. Just adults. Send me to adults. That's it. Um, but how I get Dr. G is actually because um, I'm an applied social psychologist, so I got a, another master's and PhD in applied social psychology. So a lot of my work is with grant making, um, program development, and evaluation. Oh, oh, you're fancy schmancy. Okay, so I've got both sides, right? Because now you can also tell me, Dr. Gia, how do we fix this? How do we fix? Right. Yeah, how do we fix um, the 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 seemingly systemic issue of abuse? Uh, you know, this it is is a is is, is physical, emotional, uh, sexual abuse. Are they all considered mental health issues, or that's just the devil? I would not talking to just say the devil, but no, I don't think that's that's clinically the appropriate term. Is that is this all mental health uh, issues, Doctor Gia? Yeah, I mean, we could take the perspective of it's the devil as well, <laughs> um, but we we gotta let people. We we have to put the responsibility as well on people who, um, in some instances, are outright making poor choices, um, and then in other instances, they are the product of their environments. Um, and it, it's it's huge. You 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 mentioned systemic, and that's really 
what we have in our country. It is systemic. We have broken systems, um, ill-equipped, ill-resourced, um, and people who, for so long, this has been, we have victimized the victim for so long that we don't have safety in our society for somebody to actually share. Um, I think for me, the the stories when I, they come to office and um, you know clients share the ones that break my heart the most are the ones that actually did tell somebody. They told somebody mm. and nothing happened. Mm, I feel yeah. for me that psychologically, I think that does more to some to break somebody's spirit and really to um, kind of put them in this constant cycle of trauma response than somebody who had an experience or experiences found the courage to use their voice and share and that had somebody hear them, see them, advocate on their behalf and, and do what they could to get them out of the situation. Um, you're, you're really looking at the difference between the ability to, to bounce back and somebody who may find themselves in cycles where they are drowning. Mm. Let me ask you something, Dr. E. Um, you know, as we, because we're going to do a slight pivot off of this topic in a second, but in your practice, when you, you know, the issue of abuse, and I'm so happy that you're here, Eddie, you know, you know, you my people, um, that when we talk about abuse, um, we, we tend to look at it from a female point of view, right? Predominantly. Yeah. But there are a lot of men, like why we just saw a video, right? The fact that a lady stabbed a man on the, I don't know if you guys saw the video. Did you get to see no. the video? You don't need to see we, it. We, we protect ourselves from that for our own. We self. have to. We have yeah. to. I'm so, I, I don't. I, I don't. don't. I don't, don't see half of the stories until someone tells me. No, and that's healthy. I, that's why I need to take a break because I think I know too much right now. Like I need a long standing vacation wow. on the amount of information. Like it's an overload of information. Um, but there was a stabbing and uh, this is after, of course, just the recent tragedy of the lady uh, on, you know, Key West Street. And then we saw a video where this young lady walks up to this man. They have this this argument outside and she has this, you know, the knives we just cut up onion with, not the little knife, the bigger knife, you know, your little, your, your big chopping knife. Right. And stabbed him multiple times in broad daylight with this big giant knife. Um, and we didn't hear that level of outrage as we did uh, for with the young the young lady, right? Because, um, and, and why? Tell me, tell me why. Because the narrative is that men aren't victims. Men cannot be victims. And until we change that narrative that anybody can be a victim, then we won't ever see it that they need the same level of outrage. I like I can tell you, I've had tons of stories and just guys I interact with who will tell me, and I'm not talking about little men, I'm talking about six foot four grown 200 pound men who tell me how they have been abused by their partners would go and try to report it. And they, it's a laugh gag for them. And so like, like Gia said, then they get to this place where I go and I try to protect myself and, and do what I'm supposed to do because the moment I try to, stop this or I, I put my hand up because even if I put my hand up in a way because I'm so big this person then gets a bruise or something from me defending myself then I am considered the perpetrator mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so I, I I educate I try to educate people on both sides of this and I think it's until we see that males can ju can be just as much victims as females then we will never change this narrative we only see it happening and we only feel that we should come to the rescue when it's a, when it's a female and I think that is wrong and, and I think that we need to do something about that because I hear too many stories of how um, women are are leaders in some of the intimate partner violence that continues. And again, um, this is why uh, I, I could talk about this only on the state side to where they have now changed laws where you cannot just arrest the man because that's what they used to do. We need to see that mm. here happen, where that if a domestic violence call is happening, that if you can't figure out who is the perpetrator, everybody going to jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they do now. Mm -hmm. Everybody going to jail. If we can't figure out who is the perpetrator, everybody goes until we can figure it out. 
And because I had a client like two weeks ago tell me about how the conversation was, um, her and her partner had been in, <laughs> there was so many calls um, to the police coming to their apartment. I'm talking in, a, in the span of a year period that everybody knew, like this was like a protocol. So the same officers would come and, I'm, and, and they would have conversations with them. And I say to myself, like after the second time, this ain't a conversation anymore. You tell these people that, that there needs to be some de-escalation and separation. It's a conversation they go on and, and it continues. So I'm talking, they've had, they, they said to me at least um, about five different events with officers coming in, coming, and those ones led to officers coming. That doesn't equate to how many events they've had within that year period. Hmm. Dr. Andrika Richardson, Dr. Gia Jones joining us. So then let's go to this question and let's pivot a bit on the relationship, the healthy ones, the unhealthy ones. When is it time to go? And Dr. Gia, I know, I don't watch that. And you and I, technically, I know relationship coach either. <laughs> so and you got more degrees than me. So you okay. I ain't worried about you and your talk. You got this. Um, so let, let's do this pivot because this is where... I mean, why why don't we just leave? leave? Why don't we just leave? Let, let's go beyond the abuse, not beyond, but let's take out the abuse side. Why don't we just leave? Why don't we leave when we're unhappy in a relationship? Why stay if you're going to have to cheat? Why deprive your spouse of, you know, sexual intimacy, of sex? Why not just leave? Why don't, why do we hold on so tight to things that are broken? Is it just me? What, what did I miss? You know, I, I'm going to go with Dr. G, you go first. Look, the list is so long. <laughs> I, as you were asking it, like I had, like it was just drilling. So like from the outside, th this is a very, very basic answer. This isn't even no deep psychological answer, but you know how hard it is and how expensive it is to get a divorce. People don't have nowhere to go. They build everything together with what they could have built in terms of um, sometimes because of the financial instability. So it's like, well, I I just could stay here. Then, you know, there's this thing that just irritates my soul, you know, that you're not supposed to get a divorce when you get married. You get married for your life and you just figure it out and, and, and make it do. Live miserable for the rest of your life. For the entirety. Mm, that's your, that's your lockdown. Your Living hell. But yes, <laughs> um, but we, we must we must make our do in that because you said I do, and so you said that before God, and so God hates divorce, so we don't we don't divorce, we don't separate, um, you know. So those those are kind of the you know that part of it that I think is very cultural. And then aside from that, I think there's this not I think there's the, there's a comfort in in mess when you have mm -hmm. when all it's all you've known. So number one, y'all may not have even been the best fit because y'all were too messy together, but it was comfortable because you came from a messy household. That's all you knew. And so that was that was attractive to you. And now you in it and it's like, well, I know I should want more, mm -hmm. but you know, you know, and you know, you just keep hearing the, you know, and as a therapist, and one of the first questions I ask you when you come in is, you know, what are your goals? What, what am I supporting you toward? And so if you say to leave this person, if it is an individual who is looking at a, a coming out of a poor relationship, then I'm going to keep challenging you until you tell me. And sometimes I do say, now, hey, has your goal changed? Mm -hmm. Do you, are you trying to, and I, I've asked clients this before, do you want our sessions to help you develop the coping skills to stay in this thing that you're all in this relationship yeah. because yeah. it makes no sense for us to have these goals for us to come and talk about how you're moving forward what steps you're taking this kind of stuff um if really deep down you're not prepared to to really commit to it so mm. yeah no those are good points dr e why, why do we why do we stay someone said this to me yesterday and somebody said it to me today two different conversations it's cheaper to keep her like I literally <laughs> said that to me. I said, "Whoa, I can't believe it." Two two different places. Somebody said the same thing, and I think a lot of times we just get so comfortable that we don't want to move. Gia said it all. Like we get so comfortable. Like 
it, it's it's almost easier to say what we know and this is why you see relationships now evolve to people will rather cheat than leave that's that's where we've gotten to we've gotten to the so, system in where um it's almost uh it's almost common knowledge that your partner is cheating but y'all still ain't going nowhere and y'all don't have a relationship and you would rather stay in it than leave is it because like Gia said it's because of the 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 the, the amount of work it takes to get a divorce um uh, is it predominantly economics? Uh, because that's what I, I'm trying to figure out. Is it mostly cultural that we believe in, in, in um, you know, marriage and that it is a commitment? We did this before God. Or is it that, man, look here, I ain't got nowhere to go. Or, mm. uh, because you I'm know trying to figure this out. You know yeah. how I feel about our divorce lawyers. I think they're so archaic. They are. Um, and they literally create a system in which we have we have people saying they married, but they only married on paper because one, it costs at a minimum, if you ain't bringing at least $1,500 to start the process, then you ain't going nowhere. So I have plenty of couples who are married, who have not been married as per se for over a decade, but they just can't afford to put that money to get divorced. So that's one of the biggest issues we have here. And then the reasons we have to justify here to get divorced are beyond. I wish we would take the, a look at the legislation because this may also be a part of what's creating some of these abusive environments. I, I think I, so. I'm put that out there. I think so. Because I really? think you, you, you are trapped in this situation. You can't get out. It's financially taxing to you. You want to move on with your life and, and you can't. And so what do you do? People then go in survival mode. And when you go in survival mode, anything happens because it's survival of the fittest. So we got to do something about our laws. I think that's one of the first things we have to. And it's not the idea of making it because um, I'm sure the religious um, folks may say, well, then you're you're taking the sanctity of marriage. It's not that because we're really taking marriage seriously. Some of them would stop marrying people who have not had premarital counseling. But anyway, yeah. I won't. I won't. Because there used to be a time when that was mandatory by by I would think every institution here. And now it's not necessarily mandatory. And I have an issue with that. Because no, we need that. It, and, 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 and I always say they should go through both. They should go through the religious one and they should go through the mental health mm -hmm. version of premarital yeah. because they will give you two different aspects. Because um, now in certain parts of the world, if you don't have your certificate saying you went through that, you can't even get a marriage license. Very good. And, about the, good. and look at their levels of divorce rate. It's completely different. So I'm just saying we have some things here we need to do. Yeah, let's take a quick break. When we come back, more with Dr. E and Dr. Gia. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to The Hit Back with Nahaja Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Business's new smart solutions powered by super fast, reliable broadband, you'll feel like there are more versions of you working for you. From website design, development, and digital marketing to promote your business, 24 7 business class support to cloud solutions, security, and more. Multiply your growth today. Your child needs nutrients every day and Enfagrow has DHA and iron, which supports your child's mental development. Enfagrow has components which cow's milk does not contain. Support your toddler's growth and complement their diet with Enfagrow. Let's fuel the wonder. This product is not intended to be a substitute for breast milk. Milk does not contain DHA, but contains calcium and other nutrients. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is safe and effective. Just one jab for now offers you protection against the serious risks of COVID-19. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine reduces the likelihood of serious illness, hospitalization, and death from COVID-19. Get vaccinated and help reduce the spread of COVID-19. To be safe, continue to wash your hands, wear your face mask, practice physical distancing, and get vaccinated. 
This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Health and this radio station. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. It's a hit back with Nahasha Black. 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 You're listening to the hit back with Nahaj Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. So, if you're just tuning in, I want you all to know on Monday, the hit back will have an exclusive with the maternal grandmother of Baby Bella, the family that is in the news today requesting uh, possession of the body of Baby Bella. I had a chance to speak with the grandmother yesterday, and uh, she will give you know the show an exclusive, and we get to get behind the scenes on that side of the story. Um, it is an interesting one, and it's a delicate one, and uh, one that they wish to have their side of the story told and um, uh, to give their perspective. And so it is one where we, we we will move with sensitivity for the legacy of the of the beautiful little girl and uh, that we will always remain sensitive to the story uh, for the baby that, that, you know, was taken from us as quickly as she was taken from us. So that is on Monday. Tune in. Don't miss it. And uh, let's, you know, continue to pray for the families, right? Because this is devastating to them as well. But as a country, that it is um, mindful that we need to really be paying attention and being our brother's keeper and our neighbors. And, and there's a lot of stuff going on, right? So I can imagine the grief the neighbors are feeling, wishing that they had done more. And it's a whole issue of culture, right? Uh, do you stay, you know, because people just cut their children hip all the time. So if you hear a baby crying next door, you want to take somebody, you know, finish them off. But maybe there is a sound that you do hear and you know it's a wail that's uncertain. Like, I don't know what to do on this one. I need to I need to get my therapist on here so they can help me too. Um, I got uh, Dr. Gia and Dr. E joining me on the show. Let me ask you that question, ladies. It's a real quote, cool, honest to God question. Because I remember one time, my good mother, my brother, this is, it's, it's, this is a funny story, but it might be in a different culture. It might sound a little distressing. So my brother, you know, he thought he was mad, a little madness. My mother's a single mother. So with four boys, she had to man up. You know, he had to discipline them. She had to handle them. And so one day he was under the table, but he was mouthing off. And my mother took one of those coconuts with the eyes already out with the three holes. And she carried it at, like it was a, it was a bowling ball. And she drew back, rolled that sucker with an underhand, you know, turn with a nice roll as if you're rolling a bowling ball. And she rolled that straight under the table and it knocked him square in the head. It was hilarious, but it hurt him. I did laugh. I did laugh. I was young and I laughed and it hurt him. But we in the whole house, we laughed. He did holler. Mind you, he had a camoli, but he didn't die. We didn't anticipate he was going to die. But we know the neighbors heard him wail. Like he did a good little solid shriek. That shriek, I'm sure that the neighbors knew not to come run over. Need a deal in with the boy. But when do you know, like if, when should the neighbor run over? Like what, because I, I, culturally we, beat, we, we we discipline our children, right? So like, I, I, I'm i sure the neighbors are like, but they didn't know. It's just, maybe they just heard the baby cry. They didn't know. Like, how do you, I think that is something that they're weighing, you know, that they are carrying. How do you know when to step in? I think that's a big one. Oof, Dr. Gia. I, yeah, oh. I was going to say, I can't. That one is tricky with when the child is crying, do you walk over and knock on the door? However, I I am just a firm believer because there is just almost every story we hear, this one um, also included, where it really, the, the one thing that comes to the fore is not the first time. That's That's very rarely ever the occasion. So for example, with these neighbors, I did catch the news uh, a couple of times when they interviewed the neighbors um, and, you know, the questions around her um, kind of protection, not protection in terms of safety, but just like being, um, having, I guess, an adult coverage because she was home, she'd go over to the neighbors for mm -hmm. food and this kind of stuff. Like 
that to me is the opportunity when you can start asking more questions. Um, I just don't know. Nowadays, 2021, I don't know. Um, unless the child is saying, you know, like in the screaming, the child is saying, you're hurting me or something, then I may call the police to say and record it so that the police can hear it if there is a, you know, something that questions. But now I don't, I don't know. Um, it definitely is a different time than um, when yeah. neighbors could have and were invited to come over to, to have that conversation. But yeah. I, I just think you start, you start putting the pieces together. And I think the pieces together were if this child had to come over by my house, if I had to bring her over because nobody was home with her, or she said when she came over, she ain't had nothing to eat. And this has happened a number of times where she didn't have anything to eat. Those to me are enough uh, moments where it is a something's not right in this home. Um, and I now have to ask myself, how do I offer support to this child? At mm. four, it may be a little hard to say to her, you know, let me know if, you know, to kind of have that conversation to say, I'm here to support you if something's not safe. You know, she can do that with a four-year-old, but a four-year-old is still developmentally dependent, especially depending on the child's developmental um, capabilities, that may be a challenge, but yeah. And, and these yeah. aren't easy questions. These aren't yeah. easy questions at all. Uh, uh, Dr. E? Let me tie this to what you were talking about earlier in the show. So me and Gia need appointments too. We need appointments to the mental health board so we could actually make some changes happen in this country. We so do. let's put that out there. We because, do. <laughs> because what I would say we need is a wellness check line. We don't have one of those that I know about. And what a wellness check line would be, and it's if, um, countries have it throughout the world, is a number you would call where you, where you have, you would call in and say, hey, um, I have some, there may be something happening in this household. Could you go do a wellness check? That's it, simple, which means that uh, most times it covers you from not being involved but you wouldn't know you did something to make sure somebody went over there just to check, mm -hmm. right? Right. And that may eliminate the guilt that many people are now carrying because they failed to act in this situation when they may have had some inclination that something just was not right. And so that may be a way to help bridge this gap. And I, I think we have to be very careful with the word discipline we use in our culture because some of the things I find that we think is discipline is straight out abuse. Okay, and we yep. need to be very honest with ourselves. Yep. With it. Yep. Um, and I'm not saying I I was not. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I think I ducked a few stilettos growing up. Um, <laughs> but don't. but I'm just saying now when I reflect on it and understand uh, my behavior, the context of everything, and what was abusive, many of us can when we were when we look back at it. The things that um, we were subjected to were because our parents were subjected to that because that's what their parents did and they mm -hmm. had no other forms or ways to, one, emotionally communicate with us mm -hmm. and two, show us healthier ways. Now, here's a, here's a thing we can't excuse anymore. We live in an age of technology where we have definitions out there. We have campaigns out there educating people on the differences of how to discipline your children and where the different forms work and how to get resource help. So I am very cautious with that word now of this, having some child or person screaming for a, a profuse amount of time and nobody is just even going or calling to say, is everything okay? Yeah. And I don't know yeah. what happened in this situation, but I'm just talking about general situations because even if you have a baby with colic, he would tell the neighbors, look, my child is colic. So if you hear them kind of screaming a lot, yeah. I'm abusing them. I just let you know that my child is going through this. But feel free to come help me because right. you right. need some reprieve. And, and you know what? But you guys said it right. And, and, and Dr. Gia said it. It's a different time, right? Like where mm -hmm. we would be with this community uh, uh, support, that it, it, it we've become more isolationist, right? We've right. become more isolated in the way we do business in terms of the community and our families. And for some reason, because, you know, listen, you don't trust everybody in the community, right? And uh, a lot of people envy you, you welcome in your house, and then you didn't realize you were being cased. And next day you come back, ain't nothing in your house. So things have changed overall. That is kind of, uh, you know, limited interaction with each other. But that that is a very good point. We got a caller on the line. Caller, welcome. You're on the head back. Godly David, this talking away along with you and your guest, Nahisha. How you doing, Brayman? 
Boy, we ain't got no justice law and order in this country, so I'm doing bad. Oh, boy. But, but I have a question for your guest. Doctor, what's her name? There's two here, Dr. Adrika Richardson and Dr. Gia Jones. Well, anyhow, I want the one which we're talking about the marriage. Now, okay, that's both. But go ahead, Raymond. Okay, now look okay, here. I, I need some information. I never were married, right? But you have to church with counsel people before they get married. The persons in which they had counsel have to go to the to the to the government law offices to get license, right? The church would have a problem, right? Even though they go under the, the um, uh, what you would call theocracy governing, um, they would have a problem. They would have a problem with it within uh, the midst of them, right? And they would ha they would go right to that same uh, government, right? What makes the law, you know, for the for the country to get them um, a uh, reconciliation. Now tell me something. What's really happening there? I can't see it. Hello. I, I, I may have missed it. Uh, yeah, I'm. No. I'm. Did yeah, you get I it? Saying, yeah. I, I. Are you saying that um, the counselors are having some suspicions, but they still go ahead and marry the couple? Is that what you're saying? What I am saying is right. You have theocracy government, what's supposed to be the highest in any land in the church, right? Right? Not uh, necessarily the, the, agree, but continue. That same theocracy governing, they go to the people, they go to, to um, uh, secular governor uh, governing to get licensed to, to establish a church. When the theocracy governing gets in problem, which is the church, they go to the, um, uh, to the, 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 uh, the uh, what you would call the secular government for for situation to be reconciled. When uh, a person want to get to the, get divorced, even though they had gotten uh, counsel from the theocracy people, the theocracy people, they also goes to the secular governing to get for a situation to be reconciled. So tell me, what's happening? Which one of them are right? Which one are not right? Raymond, thank you so much for the question, my friend. I, I, anyone? I, I don't really get the question, but I don't I get the question. I don't if I had to guess, what he was trying to ask is that if you're starting out with somebody who's theology based and then they go for a secular to get divorced, why aren't they going to theology to be to, to for it to be considered for divorce? But typically it is because in this country, uh, one of the things is that you typically have to go to counseling. You have some proof that you went to counseling, depending on your route for divorce, if I'm understanding that correctly. I don't know. I, I, I tried. I, and I appreciate you. I appreciate yeah, and you. I, I, yeah. I agree. I think, that, I think that was what it was. The only challenge I have is that you don't have to have a license to provide counseling in the church. You don't have to have any kind of permission or any kind of training or anything to start a church. So there are also some challenges, you know, with that 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 kind of logic there because that's not consistent. So we we don't necessarily find that churches always have trained counselors. Um, do pastors do a good job with pastoral counseling? Many of them do, yeah, um, but trained counseling to identify certain patterns of behavior that may be problematic in a marriage? Probably, maybe not. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, with all of the training or with all of the counseling we get, because we did we did marriage counseling, my husband and I, pre-marriage counseling at church. And uh, yeah, listen, we've been married a long time. So when we needed a real counseling, not to say the church one wasn't great. <laughs> when, you, when you need to go and go deeper, and then Jesus paid it all. You take you take the all the all of them that you need to sustain it, right? Um, but also to help you grow and get through it. And so I, I don't know if I necessarily understand. And I appreciate your finding out what the, what the question was because I, I I really don't know if I got that. But I support, uh, of course, Brayman always calls. But I, I'm happy that y'all tried with that question. All right, ladies. 
before I let you go, and we're running out of time, my producer already told me, I think my producer's doing the countdown, two minutes. So I want to ask you both before you go, what is the most important thing in your years of doing this business of psychology? When you look at relationships, whether it be familial, whether it be, you know, uh, uh, between your spouse, man, or woman, relationship-wise, the central thing that you wish that everyone would do foundationally in their relationship for it to be healthy. Uh, Dr. Gia? Set boundaries. Ooh, and, was... and if I have to explain that, then we can need another hour. <laughs> oh, no, we but... got a whole show. We got show. I got the strong one book. We have to do a show. Dr. But e? Set boundaries. Oh, set boundaries. That's good. I like that. I would say that they, people have to work on a, a being emotionally intelligent. And okay. we talked about that, but that's the idea of understanding how to communicate, understand, process, and have emotions all together. I like those two. Set boundaries and be emotionally intelligent. I like those two. That set boundaries one is a whole show. Mm-hmm. Dr. E, I think we've touched on that maybe before as well. You're listening to The Hit Back. Dr. Gia Jones, uh, author of The Strong Ones, one of my all-time favorite book by any author, Bahamian author, but she wrote this book. I'm so proud and so excited. And of course, the number one uh, therapist on my show, sorry, Dr. G, you know, you're going to get there. But look, Dr. E. Look, she's amazing. <laughs> I I agree. Let's go with that. <laughs> Dr. Enrico Richardson, ladies, thank you so much. Be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everyone. Next week, Monday, don't forget, join us here live on the show, the grandmother of Baby Bella, the paternal maternal grandmother live on the show. See you guys next week. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. We're out.